Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Japan and welcome back to another read along. Today we are going to be reading out of the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. I'm all, I only have about 10 minutes to do this video, so I'm going to kind of rush through it. But please follow along with your in your Bibles. Alright, so let's get started. Colossians 1, greeting. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossae, Colossae. grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, for, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Their faith in Christ. We give thanks to the, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Praying always for you. We should always pray for our brethren. Okay? Since we heard of your faith in Jesus uh, Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, the hope that is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it is also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth, since you knew the grace of God in truth, as you learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on, on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. Preeminence of Christ. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We all need to pray, pray for knowledge, for his knowledge, not for, for our worldly knowledge, but for, you know, the knowledge of his will in our lives, Okay in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Okay, did you catch that? That you may walk worthy of the Lord. You need to be worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay, be fruitful. We need to be fruitful. Increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Okay, and we shouldn't take advantage of that either. Okay, since we've been delivered from the darkness, we should stay away from things that are, you know, of a dark nature. Okay, the things, you know, of lust, like lust of the flesh and things like that, pride of, you know, Pride of life, you know, lust of the eyes, drinking, um, sexual immorality, all that stuff that belongs to darkness. Also, uh, you know, things that belong to darkness like, you know, uh, demonic movies and things like that. We should stay away from that because we've, didn't, we've been delivered from that, okay? And we have redemption through his blood. Our redemption cost his blood, okay? So he is the image of the invisible God. Okay, the firstborn of over all creation. For by him all things were created, okay, that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. So everything in the universe that we can see and not see even, you know, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, he created everything and it was created for him. Okay, all things were created through him and for him, including our, uh, ourselves, you know, including us. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence, reconciled in Christ. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him being Jesus. You know, through Jesus we are reconciled, uh, reconciled you know, all things to himself being, you know, God the Father, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, ha having made peace through the blood of his cross. Okay, it cost his blood again. And you who were once alienated. Okay, in some, uh, I think in, in some other Bibles it says, you who were far, far off, you know. But, uh, and you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. Okay, through his flesh. Okay, to present you holy and blameless and above reproaching his sight. If indeed you come, uh, sorry, if indeed you continue, if you continue, there's the if word. Okay, after you've been saved, after you've received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've been saved by his blood, you've been reconciled to the Father through his blood. 
It says, verse 23, for all of you who are, you know, like once saved, always saved, you know, no matter what you do after you've been saved, it's okay because God has covered all of, you know, the, Jesus has covered all of your past, present, and future sins. Uh, the word if in here, don't miss it. If indeed you continue, continue, C-O-N-T-I-N-U-E, continue, you know, in the faith, you have to continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Okay, so, you know, you need to continue in the faith, and faith, should, if you're continuing in the faith, it means you need to continue to bear fruit then, right? Okay, so bear fruits of, you know, worthy of repentance. Uh, verse 24, sacrificial service for Christ. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is in the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship, this is Paul talking here, from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which was hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Okay, now he's been revealed to his saints. He reveals, the Lord, you know, reveals things to his saints. Okay. So the, the, his mysteries. To them God willed me to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, okay? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present. Why do we warn? So, you know, people who are, you know, sharing the gospel, they're not just supposed to say the good things, you know, you know, if you do this, you know, if you believe in God, you'll get this reward, you'll get that reward, you know, if you get saved, you'll have this reward, you'll have eternal life, and you'll, you know, you won't suffer, blah, 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 things like that. No, no, we're also supposed to warn, too, okay? Warning every man and teaching every man in all, in all, all, you know, complete, all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. We're supposed to prevent every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Those who teach, we need to teach the whole, the all, the full gospel, okay? All right, the full wisdom here, okay? In all wisdom, okay? To this end, I also labor. It's a labor to, to teach the full truth. It's not much of, it's, it doesn't take much work to you know, tell people only the good things. But you know, we're supposed to labor, striving according to his workings, which work in mightily. Okay, so we should keep that in mind. I've got like four minutes to do the next part. Not even that, three minutes? <laughs> it's almost lunchtime with my colleagues. Okay, Colossians 2. Not philosophy, but Christ. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of, of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Again, wisdom and knowledge are the treasures we should be seeking after. Okay? Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and steadfast, steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Okay, remain steadfast. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So walk in him. Okay, don't walk, you know, to your own pleasure, but walk in him. Rooted and built up in him. In, in, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. Don't let anyone cheat you and, 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 you know, and trick you into false philosophies and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men. Okay, don't be bound to their traditions. According to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all fullness, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Not legalism, but Christ, okay? In him, you were also circumcised with circumcision, made without hands, but uh, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, bur uh, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses, you being dead, you should die to your sins. Being dead in your trespasses, that's what we're supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to be dead to our sins, 
okay, if you're still living in sin, you're not dead to your trespasses. And the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of uh, requirements that was against us, which is, uh, which is contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, uh, triumphing over them, uh, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or drink or, regar or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of the things to come. They're a shadow of the things to come, okay? Especially the, uh, the Jewish festivals, okay? They're like practice for real events, okay? But the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility. False humility, yeah. There's a lot of people like that. And worship of angels. A lot of Christians who worship angels more than they do God. They, they, they love angels. They, they think that they're beautiful and they look at them and they, you know, I have my guardian angel and this angel, I have this angel that's over me and they worship the angels instead of, you know, the one who made them. So, you know, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up, puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head. Okay, he's got his own, you know, ideals and all and his own doctrines. He's puffed up by his own doctrines, his own things that he made up himself. You know, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows by with increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why? As though living in the world, do you subject yourself to all regulations? As if you're living in the world. Why do you subject to the world then? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Okay? These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-opposed religion. Self-imposed religion with these, with these rules and regulations. Okay? False humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value. They are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. They're not going to keep you from sinning. All right? So that concludes chapters 1 and 2 of Colossians. Okay, I have to have uh, lunch with my colleagues now. We're having a little powwow in, in the teacher's room. And so I will catch you all after lunch. Uh, until next time, uh, I bless you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. If you have a prayer request, please let me know. Love you all. I'm out. Bye.